Welcome back, grade 10 class. Before the ad break, we did a practice question. Now I have with me here a couple of application questions and I want us to work through these questions together. All right, let's see what the first question is saying. It reads as follows. Val Vos Rose has bought sausages that had expired as they wanted to increase their profits. So it's most likely that when we were buying these sausages, their price was down because they were expired. And we did this with the idea that they would make a profit. This has, however, caused sickness. Okay, I want you to get that in some of the customers. David has decided not to be honest with his customers. All right, so some sausages which had expired were bought and then uh, food was made which was sold to the customers. And the customers who bought the goods and consumed the goods are now sick. But now David has decided not to be honest with his customers. Which business principles must David consider? All right, so I'm going to talk about two principles, business principles that must be considered, okay? I'm going to give you a second. I want you to think which business principle should David consider, all right? He has bought expired goods and used the expired goods to make food, and he sold the goods to the customers. Now, the customers are sick. Which business principles should he consider in this case, okay? I gave you a second to think. I know most of you already have the answer now, all right? We're going to start having the answers back, all right? The first one is going to be your transparency. So we're going to come here. The first business principle that he has to consider is transparency. He has to be transparent, okay? Transparency becomes number one, all right? So this becomes business principle number one, okay? What do we say when we say he has to be transparent? David's behavior must be such that it is clear. So he has to be clear with his business dealings, all right? That he has nothing to hide. He has to be clear showing that he has nothing to hide. So first, he has to follow the transparency transparency principle. He has to be clear and there must be nothing to hide. There must be nothing to hide. It is also important to consider that he has to be transparent because if he is not being transparent to his customers, he will be acting in a wrong way towards his customers. All right, so he has to be honest. In other words, on being transparent, the next point that you can mention in being transparent is that if he does not become transparent, that means he will, becoming, he will be becoming dishonest with his customers. So you'd rather say being transparent means he is becoming honest. He is becoming honest with his customers. He is becoming transparent with his customers. So, I'll repeat again. Which principle must David consider? Number one, transparency. That means everything must be clear and that there is nothing to hide. Number two, he has to be honest with his customers. He has to come out in the open and say, this is what happened. The second principle that he has to consider is accountability. Accountability. Accountability accountability, all right? David must be accountable for his actions. That simply means David has to take responsibility. He has to take responsibility, okay? I know you guys are writing. Please write with me. David has to take responsibility for his actions. He has to take responsibility for his actions. David has to take responsibility for his actions. And then, being accountable means he should be able to meet with the customers. He should be able to meet with the customers 
So here you should meet the customers. You should meet the customers and then explain to them everything that has happened, that has led to his customers getting sick. So in being accountable, it simply means he has to be responsible for his actions. He has to be able to meet with the customers and explain to them that this is what happened. I bought food that had expired. That is why you, my customers, are not feeling well. All right. This was the first question that I have. I have another question, which I'm going to quickly go and do it together with you. Okay. Here is my next question, which says, Val Vos Rose wishes to extend their reach to Van der Bell Park, Sasobek, Soweto, and Linasia. These are towns that they want to open new business. The business intends on buying a vehicle for each of the towns. Each vehicle will cost 235000 that is, per vehicle. What internal control measures can the business put in place to safeguard its assets? So it needs to safeguard its assets. Remember, it's going to buy a number of vehicles. What internal control measures can the business put in place to ensure that the vehicles are safe? Number one, let's quickly go. Remember, internal control for your assets. So, in terms of vehicles, these assets or these vehicles must be registered. So, number one, our vehicles must be registered. Our vehicles have to be registered. That is by the traffic department. They must be registered with the traffic department. With the traffic department. They must be registered with the traffic department. The next point that I would bring is that all the vehicles must be recorded in the books. The vehicles must be recorded in the business books. All the vehicles must be recorded in the business books. And then one other thing which is very important so that our vehicles do not get stolen is that the vehicles must be installed with a tracking device. We must install a tracking device in our vehicles. Okay, so these are some of the internal control measures that you put in your vehicles such that we can keep them safe. All right, I'm going to go again to another question which I have, which reads as follows. Valvos Rose Traders has land and buildings which were bought for 400000 This is what we bought the land and buildings for in the year 2019. Recently, David has been told that he can sell the land and buildings for 750000 Now, David Gears, the owner of uh, the business, has asked the bookkeeper to record the value of land and buildings at 750000 in the books of the business. What does that mean? The linen buildings were bought for 400000 but we have recently been told that the value of the linen buildings is now at 750000 Now, the owner is now saying to the bookkeeper, I want you to record 750000 in the books of the business. Okay? Now, let's see the next part. Advise David on the decision that he has taken. Is this a good decision? If it is a good decision, why would you say so? If it is not a good decision, which gap principle are you relying on? The moment we talk about our assets, which is land buildings, remember when we buy them in the past, we talk about history. Remember earlier on, I did speak about history. So already in your mind, I'm drawing your attention to the historical cost concept. So is this decision correct? No. He must not record the asset at 750, but the assets must be kept at 400,000, not at 750,000. Okay? If he does record the assets at 750,000, that decision will be going against it will be going against which principle? The historical cost principle. It will be against the historical cost principle. Okay? 
And do you remember what the historical cost principle says earlier on? It says that assets must be recorded at their original cost price, that which we paid for them back in the past. So in this particular case, the assets must be kept at 400,000, okay? They must be kept at 400,000 and not be recorded at 750,000. I have one last question that I want to do with you. It says, Magis Maguinya is a business that sells sandwiches filled with mints in Soshangue. The owner, Ms. Shabalala, was told by a friend, Sarah, about a summer festival that will be hosted in Swane. Sarah has encouraged Ms. Shabalala to sell the sandwiches at this festival. And she assured her that if she sells at this festival on one day only, that is a Saturday, Ms. Shabalala could have sales that can reach 22,000. Ms. Shabalala has already decided to record the 22,000 in her business books as income, as she has been assured that many customers will come on the day. So she has been told, if you go and sell at this festival, you will make lots of money. You can make 22,000. And then now, Ms. Shabalala has gone now to record that 22,000 already in her books as what? As income. Now, can you advise Ms. Shabalala on her decision to record 22,000 in the business books, even though she has not yet received the money? Remember, you must advise her basing on some particular principles, all right? Was it wise to record the 22,000 before she has even gone to the place to sell? It was not a wise decision, okay? So what advice can we give then? Please advise Ms. Shabalala on a decision to record that amount in the books, even though she has not yet received the money. The first point is the money must not be recorded. It must not be recorded. It must not be recorded until it has been realized. Until it has been realized. Realized simply means until we have received the money. This is in accordance with the prudence principle. This is in accordance with the prudence principle. We must not record any income unless we have received it. All right? So the 22,000 can only be recorded when we have received it, not when we have not even gone to the place to make the sales. Delinus, we're going to go for a quick ad break. I'm going to see you in just a short while.